was getting my hair cut. The guy was cutting my hair, and I could hear two ladies. They were discussing plastic surgery. And uh, in plastic surgery, the lady made a comment that really caught my ear. She said, she's about to have a procedure. She said, I don't want to look like an alien, but she said, if they could take off five to seven years, I would be happy. And so that inspired me because that came in with what I was uh, contemplating. So I'm going to do a bonus lesson on uprooting rejection, which is not plastic surgery. Relax. So, <laughs> But it has to do with body image, rejection and body image. And I think you might find this interesting. You might uh, recognize someone in the mirror. Here we go. Okay. Let's look at this. Uh, Let's get right into it. Psalm 139. We're going to read verse 13 through 18. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Okay, so we looked in our uh, series at rejection, the the problem of when you receive a message that you have no value or less value. And uh, so we're going to focus, we're going to talk about rejection and body image. The idols of our society would be money, of course, but let's, let's think about the idols of beauty and body. The constant message that we get over and over again is your worth and your value as a human being is based on your looks, it's based on your body. Think about advertising. How often do you see ugly people advertising a product? (laughs) And I dare say probably not often because its beauty is associated with sales. Sometimes this is subliminal. They have a beautiful, you know, sexy woman draped over a car because this is sending the message to women, if you buy this car, you'll look like that. Or men, if you buy this car, you'll get this kind of woman. And how many of you know both of those are lies? What car you drive doesn't change anything except your payment. Okay, so we, we were looking for uh, many weeks at rejection. So think about this. The, the, the idea of someone saying you have no worth or less worth. I want you to think about this idea. Rejection from other people is often focused on our bodies, right? Someone told us that we were not acceptable based on our looks or based on our bodies. And this is generally from the time you were young. Maybe that came from uh, parents. Definitely by the time you go to school, you got this. Whatever body or looks characteristic you had, I guarantee someone pointed it out in a not very nice way. They pointed out your height, you're short, you're tall, you're too skinny, you wear glasses, you have braces, your hair, your nose, your teeth, your weight, whatever it is, in some way, they said you're not acceptable because of the way that you look or the way that your body is shaped. So we take in constant messaging about beauty. I don't know if you understand this. If you read newspaper, magazine, if you watch television or movies, if you look on the internet, you are getting constant messaging. You don't realize that. You think you're just reading or watching 
but you're getting a message about looks, about beauty, about your body. And uh, this is in many different ways. Advertising is in many ways inspired by hell. I think advertisers have a special place in hell because their job is to deliberately make you feel inferior so that you will buy. What kind of loser would not wear this, buy that, have this, on and on and on, and often this is about your looks in many ways. Movies and TV, these are generally beautiful people. What's sad, uh, when, when people want to emulate someone on TV or a movie, do you understand that they had people who were paid a lot of money to make them look good? That is so unfair when ladies try to copy something they saw in a magazine that was photoshopped. That's not how they really look, but we get this on and on and on, and then social media, social media is incredibly destructive. If you are on social media, I predict you're an unhappy person because constantly you are looking uh, in comparison and often the idea is I don't have what they have. Okay, <clears throat> think about this, the lie of looks and body. The lie is your worth is based on your physical appearance. Your worth as a human being is based on your looks. Your worth as a human being is based on your body. That is the lie. As I say, you get that in school. You're, you're fat, you're tall, you're th whatever it is, you're short, you're not acceptable, or maybe, God forbid, that came from your own family. But the, the lie is your worth, literally your value as a human being is based on your appearance that there's a lot of things about your appearance that you, you're not going to fix. You can't change. So this is, this is foolish. So the lie of rejection that people actually buy into and they make it their own is if I looked like that then I would be valuable I would be loved I would have worth if my body was like that like I saw in the magazine that was photoshopped in the first place but if I looked like that then I would have value. That is a foul lie. The fact that your worth is based on looks, I mean, think about a number of reasons why that's, that's uh, uh, not going to be acceptable. Do you understand the standard of beauty changes through the years? If you look at pictures from art of women in the Middle Ages, ladies today would look at them and say, they're fat. But back then, they were the height of beauty. They were curvy. That's beautiful. But now, but whatever it is today, I promise you, give it a few years, and whatever is in today will be out. So how foolish to base your worth as a human being on something that's going to change over time. And, 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 and think about the incredibly destructive messages of our society, and I believe that in many ways our society is extremely unfair to women. Imagine in our society your worth is based on your bra size. <laughs> that is incredible. That is an incredibly unfair and destructive message. Or your, your worth is based on something that won't last. That is what is so unfair. Most of advertising is young people. Anybody know why? Because your beauty, as our society says, is beautiful. 
you're probably not going to look like that forever. That's just the harsh fact. My wife is one of the rare women. I think she's more beautiful today than when I married her. But that's not the norm, right? There are people, as, as I, I see, that they found the most beautiful girl in all the world, and I know she's not going to look like that forever. You found your hunk, he's not going to look like that forever. <laughs> he's got awesome hair, enjoy it while it lasts, right? <laughs> Uh, so, the, the real issue is your body and your looks are not a, an accurate indicator of your worth. Proverbs eleven twenty two. A beautiful woman who lacks discretion is like a gold ring in a pig's snout. I love the Bible here. Put jewelry on a pig and that pig did not become beautiful. It's still a pig, <laughs> right? And so this is the mistake of young people. Sometimes the only factor in choosing a spouse, they found a beautiful pig. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me just give young men a, a clue here. If you choose a beautiful woman who's mean, looks won't last, mean is forever. Okay, you're, you're, <laughs> was it Benjamin Franklin said you should marry to the ear, not the eye. <laughs> she might not look like that forever. She will sound like that forever. Okay, so, it, <laughs> all right. Every person has what I call body image. You have a body image. Image. Here's by definition, body image is the mental view you hold concerning your appearance. I'm not talking about what other people say. Body image is what you see when you look in the mirror. Body image is what you think about when you think about your looks or your body Here's the problem with body image. Most of us focus on flaws. When you look in the mirror, I understand there are some narcissists who they everything like, yeah. <laughs> Most people, when they look in a mirror or when you look at a photograph, some of you right now, Christmas is a tormenting time. You're trying to find a picture for Christmas cards. And it's hard because, oh man, look at my nose. I hate that. Oh, my eyes look terrible in that. We focus on flaws. When we look in the mirror, we see something that may not actually be accurate at all. That is our body image. Okay? That, that might not even be uh, uh, an accurate reflection. So, because people have a body image... Many times their body image of what they see or what they think about their own looks or their own body, this plays out in many different ways. Do you understand billions of dollars are spent every year in gyms, spas, fitness, not for fitness sake. You want to get healthy? You want to improve your health? Great. Great. But that's not why people are going to the gym. It is for looks. If I go to the gym, my hips won't be like this. And so they will spend money, but they're often striving for an unattainable ideal. Right? If, if your body shape is like this, going to the gym is not going to make you like this. It's not going to happen. But that is a body image. I now, I have to change or I have to fix it. Billions of dollars are spent every year in America on cosmetic surgery. Uh, I only have numbers for 2019. In 2019, Americans spent $16.5 billion on cosmetic surgery. 
changing their lips, eyes, skin, tummy, breasts, whatever it is. Even for men, they have implants for men. You can have pec implants, <laughs> calf implants. Those are unhealthy human beings. That's not, right? Because my worth, if I had calves, like, come on, how are you going to be showing that? How can I show you my calves in church, right? <laughs> if I had calves. But the whole idea, why would you do that? Why would you want to change your entire appearance? Again, and please, please don't take this. Pastor Greg wants us to all, you know, look <sighs> like mud fences. That's not, that's not my point. I'm, I'm in favor of uh, paint. Sometimes that's good. Okay. <laughs> Body image, here's the problem. I tell you plainly, many times it is demonic. This is from hell. The problem is often we began with someone who told us, you're not acceptable because you're too short, tall, skinny, fat. Your teeth stuck out, your ears are too big, your nose is funny, on and on and on. And now we take that in it becomes a part of us. It is demonic. It's a demon spirit that tells us, I am not acceptable, not because of my character, not because of my salvation, my relationship. I'm not acceptable because of the shape of my body, my ears, my nose, my eye. That's from hell. Let's read 1 John 4.18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Fear involves torment. Through the years as a pastor, I, I see that work out many times in people's bodies. They are tormented by fear because of their looks or their body. In, in, so, many, in so many different ways, I, I suspect from, through the years that there are people that they even would perhaps like to lose weight, but they have seen someone they know lost weight and then they cheated on their spouse or the marriage broke up or they backslid. So, so now at the back of their mind is fear. Eh, I'm not doing that. I don't want to lose my marriage. They didn't lose their marriage because of their weight. They lost their marriage because of their heart. But it's unhealthy fear in so many different ways. Let's talk secondly about the damage of negative body image. If you have not dealt with rejection issues, right? there are people you can still hear someone in the third grade who called you fatty, right? If you haven't dealt with that or whatever, you know, big nose or whatever attribute they were attacking, the difficulty comes when you, you, someone rejected you, you don't fit because of your shape, your looks. When you start rejecting yourself, so think about how a negative body image works out in people's lives. Number one, we often speak against our own bodies. There are people here, what you say about your body is, I hate my legs. I hate my nose. I hate my lips. I hate my hips. That, that's what you speak. You speak constantly and only bad about your body because you now have rejected your body. You're rejecting your worth. You've accepted somebody else's rejection, and so now you're doing it to yourself. Second thing is we will go to incredible lengths to try and change our looks and try and change our bodies. Fitness, and then of course, 
surgery. This is why I said I was captured by the, the lady who I overheard, and how could I help because of her loud, piercing voice, but <laughs> I don't want to look like an alien, but if they could just take off five to seven years, I would be happy. Problem is, I'm a pastor. I deal with people. I know that's not true. It's not going to make her happy. The lie of rejection, the mistake we make, is if I could just fix this, or this, or this, or this, it, then I would be acceptable. Because in our mind, then, what we think is the whole world is seeing the same thing we see in the mirror. We go, oh, man. We think we walk into church, everybody's going, hmm. But if I could just fix that, somehow, here, more than 30 years ago, I had a, a, a pastor in the local area. He asked for my help. He was trying to counsel a young girl in his church. This young girl was anorexic. When she looked in the mirror, she saw a fat person. So she would not eat or she would eat and purge. She would deliberately make herself vomit. The problem is, she is, she is skin and bones to the point of medical intervention. This is going to affect her health. She's going to die. But every time she looks in the mirror, the problem is she sees a fat girl. Skin and bones. They had to have an intervention. They're trying to help her. But the pastor said, can you help me? I'm trying to, trying to counsel this girl. Now, Though she is skin and bones, she said, okay, she, they finally convinced, you don't need to lose more weight. And she said, okay. She was consulting surgeons because she said, okay, I won't lose more weight. But she said, but my hip bones, they stick out. So she was consulting a surgeon, can you shave off the bone to change my shape? So it doesn't matter how much weight she's going to lose. I need to change. No, 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 no. It doesn't matter what you change. It's not going to fix. Listen, your body image, it comes from your heart. It comes from inside. Your body image does not come from your looks. It does not come from your shape, your weight, your height. It comes from your heart. That's why no matter what you try and change, if you don't, that's why when this lady said, if I could just take five to seven, I'd be happy. No, you wouldn't because the reason why you're unhappy is not how you look. It comes from inside. Negative body image actually causes destruction. Number one, negative body image makes you unhappy. The lie in our society of people who your worth is based on your looks. So, we have people who are beautiful. They recognize this. They're struggling with rejection. They don't think they have worth, but they recognize, but I'm pretty. Well, then what happens to you over the years? Right? The, through the year, come on, listen, I don't care. You do what you want. Everything goes south eventually. Okay? God bless you. You're not going to look like you do when you're 20. When you're 80, it's not going to happen. So, but if your entire value is, but I'm pretty, you're going to be a very unhappy human being, aren't you? There are people that they hate mirrors. I predict there are people that you did the quickest glance in the mirror this morning. Some of you didn't look in the mirror at all. You hate mirrors. Because a mirror is a reminder. I don't look like I used to look. So you are unhappy. This is the trap then over time of comparison. This is why I hate social media. Because social media is based on comparison. I was happy. I don't look. And I go, oh, man, look at her. I don't look like her. 
Well, that's good because I'm a man, but uh, you know. <laughs> but then again, this is 2021, so. I, it's, it's comparison. This is scientific. People who are involved in social media have higher rates of depression. That's why I hate it. Because they're looking, look, they're thinner, they're prettier, they have more, they're better looking, they have more people following them. And so in the comparison, then I go and look in the mirror and go, oh man. Negative body image affects relationships. See, rejection, we, we looked in other ways at the fact that rejection affects your relationships. So now let's apply rejection in your negative body image. I am not happy or I'm not acceptable because of my looks, because of my body shape. So what that does is people who don't deal with that, they tend to pull away from others. Because again, the demon that tells them when they look in the mirror, they think now, when they come to church, when they're in a crowd of people, they think everybody else is going, <laughs> hips, can you believe those hips? So the answer then, if I just stay away from people, no one can reject me. But that's not healthy. Rejected people with negative body image, they tend to not give themselves fully to others. This is part of a relationship. A relationship is partly you have to give of yourself, right? You, you, you kind of open up. If, if a relationship is just an appearance, there are people that they're like that, they're fake at all times, right? That you're not going to have healthy relationships. So people with negative body image... They're not going to give themselves fully because in their minds, if I give myself to someone, they're going to see my flaws. At some point, they're going to go, I had no idea your nose was like that. <laughs> and they're going to reject me. This works out very, in very unhealthy ways in marriage. Men and women with rejection issues, with negative body image, now they get married. So this now affects the marriage. Very common women with negative body image who get married, they withhold their bodies because they have a deep-seated fear, I'm going to be rejected, right? Marriage, the Bible says they were naked and they were not ashamed. The only person you should get naked with is your spouse. But there are people, because they have a negative body image, they're going to withhold. Men react differently. And, and let me just say, men and women are often very different, right? Ladies, you, you obsess probably more so than men, and I understand that's a big generality. Only a man can look at himself in a stained T-shirt with his gut hanging out and go, yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> Ladies don't do that. <laughs> women are not like that. and I, I, Maybe there are women with beer guts. I don't know. But uh, they're different. So in marriage, a woman will withhold. A man, that's not what he does. You know what a man does who has negative body image in himself? He criticizes. And what does he criticize? He criticizes her looks and her body. Show me a critic and I'll show you some of the rejection issues. And this becomes incredibly destructive. So here, yeah, well, you know, I married you, but uh, I had no idea that your legs were like that. That's in you, dude. That's not in her. So this is destructive and damaging. Negative body image Thirdly, it makes you vulnerable. You have a negative body image, 
because someone told you that you were not acceptable, you weren't pretty, you were ugly, whatever was the issue that was going on. So if you don't deal with that, at some point you are going to be in danger because the devil will arrange for someone to tell you you are beautiful. Look at Proverbs 7, 21. With her much fair speech, she, ca she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. This chapter, uh, Proverbs chapter 7, is a, is a chapter that deals with adultery. And I want you to notice, what is the danger here? He doesn't say the man is in danger because she had an incredibly sexy body and double D bra size. And... No, it says, it's what she said to him. And that is true both for men and women. If you don't deal, if in some way you are operating on the principle of I'm not pretty enough, I'm not handsome enough, the devil will make sure that someone will tell you you are. That, that's why you want to fix this. Because you don't ever want to be in a spiritual condition to where someone could tell you you're beautiful, you're handsome, and you go, ah, wow. Like water to a dying man in the desert. That is, that's not healthy. But that starts from within. Finally, negative body image can actually make you sick. If you realize this, I'm not going to spend a long time or there'll be people really depressed about this, but the prophet Naomi Judd. <laughs> Naomi Judd is a country singer. That's a joke. Naomi Judd said these words, your body hears everything your mind says. And that's true. This is actually science. It is scientific. You know why you should stop saying I hate my legs, I hate my hips. Because science tells us your words affect your body at the deepest level of your being. The cells of your body change according to what you say. This is also spiritual. God hears your words. You read in the Bible numbers of times, and God heard it. That which you spoke into my ears. Think about there are people here, you are praying to God, God heal my body. You ever think about this, that maybe God is going, what, that same body that I hear you say bad things about all day long? That, that's, that's not healthy. It, it, you actually are opening yourself to unhealthy spiritual powers. I've been emphasizing to you and when we were doing the series on rejection, rejection, this is not psychology. This is not mental. This is spiritual. And you open yourself to things that are destructive even in your body. If you don't fix a negative body image, this is something that can make you sick. Okay, let's give the hope. Let's give the answer then to negative body image. Let's talk about being wonderfully made. Psalm 139 is a fascinating scripture. We read 13 through 18. The reason why we are looking at those scriptures is that Psalm 139 gives God's truth about our bodies. It doesn't say Hollywood's truth. It doesn't say Madison Avenue advertiser's truth. It tells God's truth about your body. I don't care what you think about your body right now. Look at what God says about your body. The first thing that our text says is that God was involved in your creation. For some of you, the lie from hell is, I was a mistake. I was the product of mom and dad's lust. 
before they're married. I was the product of alcohol. Somebody got drunk. Right? There, there are people that were conceived in sometimes incredibly unhappy and destructive ways. And yet, let's look at Psalm 139, verse 13, what God says about your body and creation. Read this out. For you, for you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. <clears throat> okay, this is talking about, from mother's womb, this is talking about how a baby is conceived. And, and as I say, that could be alcohol, lust, that could be even more destructive things than that on our level. And yet, God knew. You're not a mistake, you're planned. That doesn't mean that God planned alcohol, you know, drunk people, he didn't plan lust. He didn't, he didn't. No, but what God is saying here, the word covered, you covered me, is a word that means to knit, to weave. Any of you that are knitters, you understand there, it starts generally with a pattern, doesn't it? You have a pattern in mind. The Bible says your body was planned by God. It's not a mistake. Let's look at a second thing. Our text goes on and says, this is God's opinion. Your body is wonderful. Let's look at Psalm 139, verse 14. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. Okay, again, he's talking about his body. He says, I am fearfully, I am wonderfully made. He says, my body is wonderful. He's not saying that because he's been working out of the gym. He says this applies to everyone. The word wonderful, wonderfully, it, it, it is talking about extraordinary, something that is awesome. I'm not going to give you a science lesson. We could do a whole series just on the incredible awesomeness of the human body. Think about just two simple things. Think about temperature regulation. When you're cold, your body shivers. When you're hot, you sweat. You know why? Because your body maintains temperature no matter what it is outside. Your body is always in the range of 96 to 98 something at all times. It's a, it's a machine. You can eat food, it turns into fuel. You know one of the reasons why human beings rule the world? Opposable thumbs. So, I mean, I know you think your dogs are the smartest things in the world. Think about if you had to live life with a paw. No, 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 we got thumbs, baby. And because I have an opposable thumb, I can pick this up. Imagine if I didn't have a thumb. Planned. And I could go on and on and on. There's, there's a, a million things about our bodies, but that's not what we see. You go to the mirror and go, oh, man, look at my ears. Oh, man, my nose. We're looking at flaws, but God says, your body's wonderful. Again, our opinion of why it's not wonderful is based on some foul person, some little brat in the third grade, or some lie of advertising that's not even real in the first place. But God says, your body is wonderful. Marvelous are your works. And what works is he talking about here? He's talking about your body. Again, the, the word is, is uh, something that is extraordinary. And God has plans for your life that includes your body. In, in some ways, you know, I'm not, yeah, clearly I'm not a, a, a heavy fitness buff, but you know why you should take care of yourself? Why you should not eat yourself into the grave? Because God has plans for your life that can't be separated from your body. It's not fair that you hate 
and don't take any care of your body because it's your body that you can have the most wonderful intellect, you have a great heart, but if your body doesn't make it over the line, you're not going to be able to fulfill God's will in your life. Ultimately, here's the answer. We said rejection in all the lessons we look. Rejection is a lie. Here's the truth. Your worth and your value as a human being has nothing to do with your looks. It has zero to do with your body shape. Absolutely nothing. Psalm 139, 17 and 18. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. This is interesting because Psalm 139 is actually talking about our bodies. In this section that we read, 13 through 18, it's talking about our physical bodies. And it says, God is thinking about us. He's thinking, you know, he's thinking about you right now. His thoughts, and God's thoughts are not, uh, oh, man. You need a little more paint in the barn, then I'd really love you. If you lost some weight, man, I would love you. No, he's thinking thoughts about us, and the Bible clarifies, because rejection tells us God's thoughts are always bad, like he's always disappointed. Jeremiah uh, 29 11 tells us and clarifies what kind of thoughts God is thinking. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. So what kind of thoughts are God's, is God thinking about you? He's thinking good thoughts. He's thinking good thoughts. He doesn't care what you look like. He doesn't care about your body shape. Because that is not the basis of your worth. That is a lie from hell that your worth is based on looks or body shape. So how should we then react? If according to God, our bodies are wonderful, if he has a plan for our lives, if our worth is not based on looks or body shape, so then what should we do? With this, what should be our reaction? Let me tell you three specific things that need to happen if you have a negative body image. Number one, we need to repent for rejecting our body that God created. God says, Your body's wonderful. How dare you? And again, I'm not talking about doing your hair, makeup whatever that's not what i'm talking about but how dare you look in the mirror and go what god created nah, that's wrong i think we need to repent and say god i am sorry for rejecting what you say is wonderful and marvelous number two we need to take authority over the tormenting spirits that lie about your body. It doesn't make sense that believers in Jesus Christ, that your life be ruled by demon spirits. And one of the things that demon spirits do is they lie. They lie to you. I'm not acceptable because of my looks, because of my shape. That's a lie from hell. But God says you don't have to live that way. Some of you live in fear. You live in fear of the mirror. You live in fear of aging. You live in fear of rejection. You can't in your own marriage open up to the one you say you love. That's from hell. So God says you need to take authority. Luke 9, verse 1. Check. Hey. Jesus called the 12 apostles together and gave them power and authority over all demons and the ability to heal sicknesses. Okay, 
Here is his followers. This, this scripture applies to you. Okay, got to cast out demons. So we're looking for the exorcist. Okay, show me the girl whose head is spinning around and spewing green foam. No, no, no. Though, sometimes those demons are a little more closer to home. Some of you, you, you heard the voice of the demon when you looked in the mirror this morning. A little closer to home. You're, you're unhappy with your whole life and your whole being because of your looks, because of your body shape. What you need to do, that's from hell. I am casting that out. I am not going to let demons torment me in fear anymore. The third thing that we need to do practically is we need to speak differently about our bodies. Proverbs 18, 21. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Okay, you're, the Bible says... You're going to eat whatever your, your mouth produces, whatever you say. This is practical. And again, I'm not talking about something that is weird. I'm not talking about narcissism. But there are people that you have spent your whole life telling God and telling your body that it's unacceptable. What you need to do is you need to thank God. Right? I hate my legs. Perhaps you should thank God that you have legs. Right? Does that make common sense? I'm not talking about becoming narcissists like, I am beautiful, more beautiful than everybody else. And I'm going to put it on Instagram to show them. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about, you know, it's been unhealthy what you've been saying, so why don't you just fix that? God, thank you. You were involved in the design of my body and my looks. God, thank you. We do that, I believe that God, if we begin to speak what God says about our body. Some of you pr should probably start reading, praying over, and speaking out Psalm 139, 13 through 18. This is what God says about this body. God, I agree with you because it is not your will that I be tormented. Let's bow our heads then. I want to help you to pray. And I do understand that, you know, we didn't deal with this issue before. I was glad I had an opportunity to add this. But there are people that this issue is actually tormenting to you. Your looks, your body, and it's from hell. And I'm going to pray. God's going to help you this morning. I want you to say this out loud. We're going to agree in prayer. I want you to say, Father God, I am your child. I was created by you. And you have planned my life. God, I recognize I have believed a lie about my body and my looks that is not helpful. I'm asking you to heal my heart. I cast out every tormenting spirit of fear and shame that would lie to me about my body. I choose to believe your word. You said that my body is wonderful and marvelous. I thank you that you've given me my body and I'm asking you, help me to live in freedom. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's praise God together right now. God, I thank you for victory.